Coming up today, we're harvesting some of our American flag leeks, and we'll give you some options on what to do with them and how to store them. And we'll take a look at some options you may want to think about on how to expand your garden so you can grow more produce. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by for all your non-GMO organic and heirloom vegetable flowers and herb seeds visit dollarseed.com Sioux Growing Supply located in Wausau Wisconsin focusing on certified leaf compost an excellent amendment for poor soil retains moisture and adds nutrients which equals less water available in labor saver pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SueCompost.com. Organic fertilizer for the health conscious organic home gardener. Family owned and operated. Visit WGardens.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind and soil hose filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew. Visit ManureTea.com. No measuring, no thinking. Stamp it, plant it, stop plotting, start planting. GardenStamp.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Well, we're in a leek bed today. These are American flag leeks next to the corn that we planted. It's time to harvest these. Now, you can harvest leeks anytime after they get about an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. Based on the variety that can be any time after you know 50 to 150 days. We're just going ahead and we're going to clean all of these leeks out even though some of them are well we're going to get the largest ones. Let's let's go that route and then we can leave the smaller ones. Now if you do leave these in the ground as you've seen on a um, First Garden New Gardener they will put on their biennial they'll put on a giant seed globe next spring and into the summer months and then they'll have thousands and thousands of seeds. We've got thousands and thousands of seeds drying from leeks that we did that last year or two, so we may not go that route again. But these are American flag leeks. Uh, it's an heirloom variety. And we'll just go ahead and harvest this one here. Now, these are not as bleached as you may see in the store. A couple of reasons why. In the store, you normally you'd see them about you know six to eight inches bleached. We transplanted these from starts that we did inside. Then we moved them when not all of them took. Now the one thing that we did not do was mound up the dirt around the um, the stalk like you would maybe a potato. But that doesn't mean that all of this is lost. The the green or the the white part, the bleach part, is what you're looking to eat. Now you can extend that edible portion up to about the first set of leaves here. I'm just going to pull some of this off. Now yeah, it's starting to get bleached. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Let me get this one off here. Okay, that's not bad at all. That's a very nice looking leek. Now the first thing you want to do, there's a, a couple of, there's a, a number of varieties of ways of storing this. Um, one, uh, we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to cut the, the roots off a little bit. And then we're going to come back, like you'll find in the store, and we're just going to cut, uh, cut the upper portion because all that's not edible. And then basically, um, that'll be good enough to store. And from my fingers down, that will be all edible portion. Now you can take this, put this in your fridge, and it'll be fine for seven to fourteen days. After that, you know what things happen in the fridge. They begin to extract moisture. They begin to dry up. So what you could do with this particular uh, leak is we can put this in an airtight bag with a damp rag or a damp uh, paper towel and that will extend the life. You can also take and cut the roots completely off. What some people will do is they'll leave about a half inch to three quarters of an inch and they'll replant the roots and then this will begin to grow another, this will grow another plant. That onions are, are like that as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take and harvest these, trim them down to this portion here, 
And what ultimately will happen is we'll take and coin these up or cut them in very thin slices and we'll put them in the freezer. Now putting them in a freezer, you can get eight to 12 months storage out of them. You can also pickle these if you do choose to go that route. So the one thing that I will caution you, the farther up you get on the stalk past the ble bleached white portion, the more of a heat or more of a bite the plant offers you. Uh, it's a little more spicier because you're kind of in the green area. So I'm going to harvest anything that's of decent uh, diameter and the rest of them, something like this, it's the size of a, of a pencil or a finger. I'm just gonna leave for right now and then we will analyze the bed as the freeze becomes uh, very prevalent, which may be hopefully for, a, a, not for a while. And then I've got some on the back side here. So let me go ahead and get these harvested. And all of this scrap here, go ahead and put in your compost pen. Excellent green material. All right, so I'm getting the last one here trimmed up. We've got uh, three, six, seven, eight of them here. There's still about 10 or 12 left in the bed here. And I'm just gonna let them set as long as um, the weather's still decent. Now there, uh, you also gonna make a number of soups out of these. Um, we got two nice ones here. Those are the size, the diameter of a broom handle. So that's very, very good. And as you get farther up, the, uh, the bleaching disappears, but we're okay with that. Uh, just a little more stronger of a, of a taste. Now this one here is almost bleached, you know, eight inches there. Also, you want to keep in mind that uh, you want to war clean these out, wash these out very, very thoroughly because every little layer has got um, dirt in it just from the rain splashing, uh, from the rain splashing up. You can also take, and once you cut these, we can submerge these in a bucket of water and, and uh, rinse them out that way and that'll get a lot of the particles of dirt. Or you can just put it, fill your sink full, let them set in their sink uh, for a while, give them a good shake and that'll get most of the particles of dirt out of uh, the leek. But leeks, very, very easy plant to grow, a very low maintenance plant to grow. Uh, you're not looking for bulbs like you do an onion, though they are both part of the same family. Uh, we are very, very pleased with these leeks and we're hoping that we can get a few more out of the bed here before it gets too cold. So we're gonna enjoy these and we are gonna plant even more next year based on the success and the knowledge that we've gathered from this year of growing them. I'm Joy Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. And we are from the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, a website for the health conscious organic gardener worldwide. And we're happy to announce our quarterly digital magazine, our fall edition. Now, in that, in the, you'll find this edition online for free, and you can download it or you can read it directly online. You can put it on your digital reader, whatever you want to do with it. It is available in the show notes below, and we have a variety of different stories that Holly and I have wrote. And we also have a special guest that we have interviewed. Yes, we've interviewed Carolyn Binder with Cowlick Cottage Farm. And we're excited to have her as our guest for this magazine. So go ahead and check it out. All right, so I'm gonna do some soil conditioning here with some authentic Haven brand manure tea. Now what a soil conditioner, the best way to describe a soil conditioner is Unlike a fertilizer, which in a granule form has to dissolve into the soil, a soil conditioner, as Mupu tea, immediately gets absorbed into the soil and starts feeding the microbial bacteria right away. Now the benefit or the, the wonderful thing about the Mupu tea is it's derived from the manure of healthy, organically raised cattle. No no antibiotics or hormones given to these cattle. So that's why the manure that is put in these little tea bags, and it doesn't smell, that's why when you soak it, it goes into the water and feeds the soil. That's why it's so beneficial because it's not got any of that chemicals that farmers will typically feed their cattle. And then it's also GMO-free cattle that uh, Authentic Haven brand family raises. So you can use each one of these tea bags about five times and each time you brew it, which you don't need air stones and, and that's a great thing. You just let it steep there in the, in the bucket, one to five gallons for one to three days. And you can get about five uses out of it. And each time you brew it, it's getting a, a lesser, lesser color, but it still has the benefits of it. Now we're going to cover the soil here in our two beds that we're going to place garlic in. 
So we want to get the microbial life as uh, healthy as we possibly can. Now with garlic, you don't want to fertilize in the fall, which this is not a fertilizer. This is a, a soil conditioner that will allow the plants or the, the bulbs of the garlic, and this will work for anything, to get well established before the fr freeze happens in, uh, in your particular area. So we're just soil conditioning with some Mupu tea, and this bed will be ready to go for garlic. And we'll also take the Mupu tea and pre-soak the garlic before we uh, plant it so it can get properly hydrated as well. Okay, so what we ended up doing is because it, it was we had such a large amount of sauce to cook down, we ended up putting it into a slow cooker. And we actually have two different slow cookers we had it in originally and then we combined them. And now it's, it's um, since it was cooked down, we just put it onto the keep warm part until we're going to put it back in this pot and add some salt and some spices and stuff. But the slow cooker is really handy because it cooks things down for you. But this way you don't have to worry about burning or anything like that. Also, I want to note that when you're doing this, you want to offset your lid. So instead of having it like this, because basically you're trying to get some of the water to cook off. So then you just offset your lid. It doesn't have to be any big deal, but you just want a, a place that the, the air can come through or the water condensation, whatever, can come through. So now we're going to go ahead and put it back in the big pot. We're going to um, add some different spices and stuff and then bring it back to boiling so that we can can it. Whether you have a large garden like we do or a very small garden, you may want to consider looking at how to expand as grocery prices go up and as difficult as food is to get to certain locations, it may be beneficial for you to see if you can expand your growing area, whether that be in containers or traditional ground garden or raised beds, so you can grow more of what you eat. So we're at the large garden here and we've got a variety of different uh, vegetables planted in our raised berm format. We've got our, our raised berm format is where we have a distinct grow path and a permanent walk space so the two don't get mixed up and you don't have a compaction issue. Now what we've been kicking around the ideal is this was a flower bed or is a, a perennial flower bed. The thought is extracting these flowers out of the bed here, which would give us about 40 to 50 more square feet. We'd put another fence around here like we have around a large garden to protect it from uh, neighborhood rabbits. But this is something that obviously the flowers is good for the bees. but we can also incorporate flowers and other blooming vegetables into the garden as well and into this patch so we can produce more. The other thought was to extend the garden out to about three foot off the house here and make this right here a walk path. The only downside to that is this has not been walked on. This path here has been walked on for many, many years and it's got a lot of grass and it's going to be very, very compacted. So the concept is to leave this, grow, uh, this walk path here, turn this into a vegetable grow space in addition to the other portions of the garden. Now let's go back on the back side and look at another ideal that you may want to consider to expand your growing area. Another concept that we've experimented with and became very successful with is growing in burlap sacks. Now these came from a local roaster in the city and we just put it filled with certified leaf compost from Sue composting suecompost.com we got peppers we got tomatoes we had potatoes worked very well now you may not have the readily available burlap sacks another concept if you had a building like we do here or on the back side of the gar uh, the garage you can make a custom made raised bed now all we've done here is taken some one by uh, six one by eight and uh, we didn't screw it together it's all fit together by we put stakes in the ground and we just laid it up here so if we do need to move this we can uh, take it apart very very easily oh uh, we'll put the link in the show notes for when we did this on an episode uh, several years ago how easy it is just to friction fit this all together and this is about 
uh, eight foot long by about uh, 12 to 14 inches wide. And it works really, really well for our, our uh, cilantro, and that's what we're going to continue to grow in this for years to come. We found that this is a perfect spot, just enough sun, just enough shade to keep the cilantro growing uh, a good portion into the warmer months. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joey Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.